I'm thinking of taking a year off university next year, and I'd like to travel around Europe. First, you have some time to look at questions one to seven. Listen carefully to the first part of the conversation, and answer questions one to seven. Good morning. How can I help you? I'm thinking of taking a year off university next year, and I'd like to travel around Europe. Okay then. Do you have any idea where you'd like to go? Well. I was thinking of starting in France and then working my way up to Eastern Europe, possibly going as far as Slovakia. Well, there are a number of ways you can do this, and we have various options available. It really depends on your budget and how you'd like to travel. That's just the thing, really.、Um, I mean, I've just finished my second year at university, so obviously I'd like to do it in as cheap a way as possible. That's fine. Could you give me a rough idea of the price range you're looking at? Realistically speaking, I'm hoping to pay between about seven hundred and nine hundred pounds. I could stretch to eleven hundred pounds, but that's really my limit. How long are you thinking of going for? About ten months. To be honest, you'd be better off travelling for about seven months if that's your budget. Okay, that's not too bad. So, how would you suggest I travel? Well, because of the time limit, I don't think walking is a viable option. Of course, in this day and age, the most convenient way to get around is by flying, particularly if you've got quite a bit you want to see in a short space of time. Saying that, I still think the best way to get around Europe is by train. As a student, you can also get a student rail card, which means cheaper fares. That sounds brilliant. How do I go about getting a rail card? Well, if you decide that's what you want to do, then we can organise that all for you. You'll need to fill in a form and provide us with two passport photos,、mm -hmm. and we'll do the rest. It costs about thirty-six pounds plus about ten pounds administration costs. Great. That's really not expensive at all. And what about buses? I was just thinking, if I decide to go to places which are a bit more remote, there are always local buses, but these are not always a good idea. They can be quite unreliable and, in some areas, quite dangerous because the buses tend to be overcrowded and some of the drivers drive way too fast. So I would suggest you don't do this. That sounds quite frightening. So what are my options then? You could hire a car, but it can be expensive. Still, I do think if you're thinking about going to smaller towns and places which are off the beaten track, then hiring a car is by far the better way to do it. You can also look at sharing the costs by hiring a car with someone else. That's a good idea. I guess I could put a message on the internet. You could do that, but don't forget that you meet people when you're travelling. And you'll probably find someone who's going to the same place as you are. That's true. I want to stay in youth hostels, so I'm sure I'll find people who are interested in going to the same places.、Oh, one last thing: what about taxis? I was thinking about if I go out at night. I use taxis all the time here. Ah,、oh, but taxis abroad are a different story. In certain countries, there are no problem, but by and large, taxi fares are high.、Oh. If you do go out at night, try walking home, but make sure you don't do this alone. Try and find people to go out with at night, or come home at a reasonable time. But if you're staying in youth hostels, you should find plenty of young people to go out with at night. I'm sure I will. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Thank you, now we're done with the first part. Moving on to the second section. You'll hear a conversation between Alan and Gianna, the office counsellor of a company. First, you have some time to read questions 1 to 6. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions 1 to 6. What's up, Gianna? You look like you're in bad shape. Yes, maybe I'll get sick leave from the boss and finally catch up on some sleep. I've barely eaten and slept in days. Those are warning signs of occupational stress. How are things at work? Terrible. After all the layoffs lately, the workload is totally overwhelming for everyone that's left. So I spend every waking moment in the office. I'm kept busy all the time. So you need to take a few minutes break every so often to clear and refresh your mind. But my boss will complain I'm not hard working. She's so capricious that you can't predict her reaction sometimes. Maybe your boss just doesn't have a clue about how much you're really doing. Keep her updated on your achievements and projects. Also insist that she prioritise everything so you can manage your time better. That's right. I suppose that would help me regain some sense of control. But I'm afraid that she'll take that as a sign of laziness and give me the axe. So take the initiative and hit the job hunting trail now. You'll be surprised at how many opportunities are out there. Well, that's encouraging. Anyway, you should cheer up and get rid of the situation. You know, according to a survey, about 40% of all people find their work very stressful and 25% develop mental or physical diseases. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions 7 to 10. So serious? I didn't know that. How do the problems start? You know, they start when conflicts at work induces stress. Your body reacts by flooding the bloodstream with hormones that tense up your muscles and increase your blood pressure. This is meant to save you in a fight-or-flight situation, but leads to a host of illnesses, ranging from insomnia and headaches to heart attacks, when it occurs regularly over an extended period of time. What should I do to prevent such things happening? Well, most occupational stress is attributed to a recognised lack of control. You should act in advance to relieve the problems. For example, you should actively pursue career opportunities rather than quietly worry about getting fired. Of course, you can't control everything, so you need to help your mind and body cope. Keep a journal to release your frustrations, take short walks to calm down, or if necessary, simply take a mental health day. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.